On April the 17th, 2016, we released the video DNA showed Paul McCartney is dead. New and original analysis. The video is based on information many people already knew. But by linking the dots, we drew a picture of what we believe to be very compelling, if not totally convincing. However, a few viewers did not get our point, and basically everyone doubted. If DNA has proved Paul McCartney is dead, why is he still there? And if DNA evidence is not good enough to get the truth out, what else can be? Well, believe it or not, I think I actually have an answer. If you search Bettina Krishpin, you may find a few articles about her, her claim and her pictures. You may also find callings of her to be not Paul McCartney's daughter. Well, they made this claim because two DNA tests showed no match between her and Sir Paul McCartney's DNA. Bettina was born in 1962 when her mother Erica Wollers had a two-year affair with Paul McCartney. Paul's name was listed on Bettina's birth certificate, and the Beatles avoided a German tour so German authorities couldn't garnish Paul's ticket revenue. And in 1966, Paul's lawyer paid 16,000 marks to Erica and 30,000 to Bettina to quiet the matter down. Erica kept the secret till Bettina was 13. And when Bettina reached adulthood, she sued. I can't imagine how difficult it must be for Erica, Bettina's mother. It is embarrassing enough to tell your daughter both her and yourself were not wanted by her father, and being called a liar and a slut when the DNA result is out. Erica was so sure Bettina is Paul's father she claimed Paul must have sent someone else's blood, so she filed a fraud charge after the first DNA test. Of course, the second DNA test showed the same result. So Bettina and Erica were deemed gold diggers and liars. But the blood test proved one of two possibilities. Either Erica was lying or Paul is a fake. If Erica was not 100% sure, why would she file for fraud charges against Paul? Of course, she probably did not see the analysis you and I saw about Paul being dead for the last 50 years. But she knows Bettina is Paul's daughter. Unfortunately, no one could believe her after the DNA test. It is easy to prove if Bettina is Paul's daughter, if Paul's brother Michael would willingly do a DNA test on behalf of Bettina. But if Paul's family has kept silence for so long, I doubt if Michael McCartney is willing to do it now. Think about it this way. Assuming Paul died suddenly and left no will, who will get his money? And if a deal was made to protect the Beatles, you and I can both think of many reasons for the Beatles and Paul's family and girlfriend to keep this secret. So how can anyone ever get the truth out? During my tireless research, I found Miss Bettina is not the only love child of Paul. Innocent Anita Cochrane was supposedly impregnated by Paul at the age of 17. The naive girl thought she had Paul's love and gave her virginity to him at age 16. Was publicly slapped by Paul and dumped like a rag doll. The poor girl had to deliver the baby in a hideout situation 
for mother and baby at home in February of 1964. Her humiliated family could not afford to support her, so they hired a lawyer to seek child support. She was offered 2.10 pounds a week till baby Philip reaches age 21. She tried to get one extra pound per week, but instead was offered 5,000 pounds in exchange for her silence. She signed and kept to her words for many years, but some of her family felt unjust for the poor mother and son, and on July 10th, 1964, leaflets were out when the Beatles visited Liverpool. The leaflet read as follows. My name is Philip Paul Cochrane. I'm just a little boy. In spite of all her loving, we got no thanks from him. It seems he loved my mother just long enough to sin. Besides his lust, she took his money to compensate a lie. But Mr. Paul McCartney, Dad, you make mother cry. It is hard to doubt Anita's claim, as Philip does resemble Paul in many ways. Other than the good looks, his singing, talent with instruments, he also loved the band he was in. He was a popular and a good kid, till the shadowy burden of his famous father crashed in on him. In 1973, Peter Brown published The Love You Make an insider's story of the Beatles. The unwanted attention by the book drove Philip to drug, and he changed completely. And in the 90s, when Philip decided to have a new life in London and get married, a family sold a story to the news, and the hurt started all over again. Philip then said he wanted a DNA test to put the matter to rest in 1997. The news totally died down after Paul, Anita, and Philip decided to work things out privately. If there is a settlement between the new Paul and Philip, then maybe it will take another court order to have the DNA test done. But if the settlement is only for Philip not to pursue a DNA test from Paul, then what prevents Philip doing a DNA test with Bettina, right? After all, they have everything to gain and nothing to lose. I do not know if either Philip or Bettina can go through new rounds of testing and the possible disappointments, but I can't help thinking how terrible the two mothers felt. You love a man who did not love you. Who do you blame? Him or yourself? You love your child who suffers forever for your mistake. But your only mistake is falling in love with Paul McCartney, whom everyone loves to this day. Hope the truth will eventually come out. This is Ken Peters at MysteryDecoders.com. Thanks for watching.